learning series. The focus in this module is phase one of the curriculum development process, preparing for the process. My name is Fox DeMoise and I'm joined by Misty Higgins. We are professional learning coordinators in the Division of Program Standards in the Office of Teaching and Learning at the Kentucky Department of Education. There are four phases to the CDP and four corresponding modules. Before engaging module one, we suggest you access the introduction to the curriculum development process video with accompanying slide deck to gain a context for the learning that follows. For this module, please make sure you have access to the following documents. The, the curriculum development process from the model curriculum framework, a copy of the participant handout to hold your thinking throughout the module, the CDP self-reflection tool, which you will use at the end of the module to assess where your district may be in relation to the essential elements of phase one. All materials are hyperlinked on the slide for easy access. Before we move into phase one content, it will be helpful for you to establish a baseline level of understanding. Look briefly at the name of phase one, prepare for the process, and at its four steps. Next, consider our learning goal. We are learning about key decisions district leaders should consider in preparing for supporting the work of the curriculum development process at the local level. This information will be helpful on the next slide when we activate background knowledge you might have about the first phase of a curriculum development process and is also available at the top of your participant handout. We will use a no need to know approach for activating background knowledge. First, Note things you may already know about our learning goal, perhaps using the title and steps of phase one for added insight. As we are beginning, this can certainly include hunches you may have as well. Next, infer things it may be important for you to find out based on the learning goal, things you may need to know. Both, both what you may know and what you may need to know here at the beginning can be recorded in the table on page one of your, of your participant handout. As the module unfolds, hold these lists in mind. You will be invited to update them during midpoint and closing reflections. After capturing what you may know and need to know, please synthesize your sense of overall understanding using the one to five scale provided. This too will be revisited during the closing reflection. So pause the video and restart after completing the self-assessment. Now that you have a preliminary sense of where you might be relative to our learning goal, let's move into success criteria for module one. Our success criteria are differentiate the role of standards, curriculum, and instructional resources, identify key actions and products of phase one of the curriculum development process, access resources to support implementation of phase one, and develop an action plan for implementing phase one at the local level. We will begin by taking up the first success criterion, Differentiate the role of standards, curriculum, and instructional resources. These distinctions will be important throughout the curriculum development process. Let's start by exploring your understanding of the role of standards, curriculum, and instructional resources. There is space in the table under success criterion one of your participant handout to hold your thinking. We're going to pause and give you some individual time to respond to this question. To help build common language and understanding, we want you to individually read through figure 1.2 on page four of the CDP that differentiates the role of standards, curriculum, and instructional resources as defined in Kentucky law. As you read, compare the information in figure 1.2 to your initial thinking. Note any similarities or differences in the space provided in the last column of the table under success criterion one of your participant handout. Pause the video and restart after you have read through figure 1.2 of, of the CDP and captured your thinking on the participant handout. We want to give you an opportunity to process what you read with your team. Based on what you read about the role of standards, curriculum, and instructional resources, what was confirmed from your initial thinking, and what might you want to revise or add? Make sure to equitably share talk time as you discuss. Also, you can capture any new ideas or questions in the space provided under success criterion one of your handout. Pause the video and restart after your team discussion. If you have more than one team, you may want 
to now have a whole group share out to hear from everyone. Based on what you read in your team's discussion, what stood out to you regarding the role of standards, curriculum, and instructional resources? Pause the video and rejoin after the whole group share out. In Kentucky law, standards address a foundational framework of what is to be learned. They establish the minimum of what students have to know, understand, and be able to do by the end of a grade level. Curriculum addresses how learning experiences are designed at the local level. The curriculum helps to focus on and connect the work of classroom teachers across a school or district to the standards, assessments, and instructional practices necessary for students to reach grade level expectations. Instructional resources include the print, non-print, or electronic medium designed to assist student learning. So, the instructional resources support the implementation of a locally developed, curri developed curriculum that is aligned to the CAS. For instructional resources, figure 1.2 includes KDE's definition of high quality instructional resources, HQIRs. We know there are lots of resources available, but not all of them are of high quality. Part of the CDP in phase three focuses on selecting HQIRs and then using the HQIRs to develop a curriculum document. We'll focus more on this in the phase three module. In terms of responsibility, the state is responsible for establishing the standards, but the responsibility for developing a curriculum aligned to the standards and the selection of instructional resources to support implementation is at the local level. Senate Bill 1 from 2022 shifted the responsibility to the superintendent. The CDP provides a local superintendent with a clear process that involves a range of stakeholders throughout to ensure the work is not done in isolation and to build understanding and buy-in from leaders and teachers for implementing the curriculum and the HQIR. Now that we have a shared understanding of the role of standards, curriculum, and instructional resources, we're going to move into a more in-depth look at phase one of the CDP, starting with identifying the key actions and products of this phase. Phase one is about preparing for the process, thinking through key logistics to help streamline the work and make it more manageable. There are four steps included in this phase. Establishing a local curriculum review cycle, developing a timeline for the scope of the work, determining the budget, and creating a curriculum development team that will work together throughout phases two and three of the process. We wanna pause and give you a chance to read through phase one. As you read, focus on the key actions and products of each step of the phase. Feel free to annotate directly on the text uh, and or record your thinking into the space provided under success criterion two of the participant handout. Right now, we wanna focus on the text and the key questions. We'll take a closer look at the key tools a little later in the session. So pause the video and restart after reading phase one and caption your thinking on the handout. We wanna give you an opportunity to process what you read with your team. Discuss each step in order, focusing on the key actions and products. Make sure to equitably share talk time as you ask each other clarifying questions and make connections to how you currently prepare for curriculum work in your district or school. Also, you can capture any new or additional ideas in the space provided under success criterion two of your participant handout. Pause the video and restart after your team discussion. If you have more than one team, you may want to have a whole group share out to hear from everyone. What thoughts, ideas, connections, or questions do you have regarding phase one of the curriculum development process? Pause the video and rejoin after the whole group share out. Now that we are through our first two success criteria, we want to pause and give you a chance to reflect. Based on your learning so far in this module, what might you add to your no need to know table on page one of your participant handout? This can include transferring items from your need to know to your no list when appropriate. Pause the video and restart after adding to your no need to know table. Now that you have a better understanding of the work of phase one, we're going to spend some time exploring key tools and resources to support implementation back in your district. Step one is to establish a curriculum review cycle based on local data and needs assessment. You may also want to consider aligning with the standards review process at the state level. Establishing the review cycle makes the work more manageable by only focusing on one to two content areas per year. The curriculum review cycle template allows you to prioritize your content areas on the left side and know each year where the district is in its implementation process for each content area. Step two, 
is to develop a timeline for the scope of the work and the CDP includes two sample timelines that districts may choose to utilize that list the phases and key actions within specific timeframes. The sample one timeline starts one year prior to expected classroom implementation and the sample two timeline starts the work six months prior to implementation. We have also included a blank timeline template for districts to use to create their own. To support the work at Phase 1, Step 3, the CDP includes a curriculum development budget template to assist districts in thinking through what is needed for the work, as well as possible associated costs and funding sources. It also includes examples of MUNIS codes commonly used for curriculum work. There are two key tools for Phase 1, Step 4. The first is the Curriculum Development Team template, where districts can record members that will make up the curriculum team, their role, and their grade level to help ensure diverse representation throughout the work. The second tool is the Curriculum Team Meeting Schedule template, which allows district leaders to plan for meeting logistics and to communicate those plans to the curriculum team. In addition to the key tools, the CDP also contains an appendix that provides more support for implementing each phase. The phase one toolkit includes a professional learning module and associated resources, sample artifacts from districts around the state, and video clips from districts sharing their experiences as they work through the process. And we want to take a little time to highlight some of the sample artifacts that are included in the toolkit for phase one. It is critically important for districts to provide clear, transparent communication. This includes prior to starting the work, ensuring that stakeholders understand the process and the content areas undergoing development or revision that year. Leaders should also communicate with stakeholders throughout the process, including opportunities for them to provide input to help inform the work. This is an example of a flyer that Graves County created and shared with their stakeholders to communicate the timeline and work that would occur around selecting the HQIR in phase three. The second artifact is an example of the curriculum development team structure from Perry County. As you can see, the team reflects representation from both district and school leaders, as well as teachers from various grade bands across the district. We want to give you an opportunity to explore phase one tools and resources. You may want to spend some time exploring individually or with your team. As you explore, focus on which tools and resources may be most beneficial to supporting the work of phase one and what are maybe some tools and resources that are still needed to support phase one. You can hold your thinking in the space provided under success criterion three on the participant handout. Pause the video and restart after exploring the resources and capturing your thinking on the handout. If you explored individually or as a team but have more than one team in your group, take time to have a whole group share out to hear thinking from others in the room. So during your exploration, which tools and resources did you feel will be most beneficial? And what were maybe some tools and resources you noted that are still needed to support phase one? Pause the video and restart after the whole group share out. We are to our last success criterion where we want to provide you time to begin to develop an action plan for implementing phase one at the local level. Before thinking through your action plan, we want to pause for a final reflection to anchor your learning from the modules so that you can move it forward into application. Go back to the no need to know table on page one of your participant handout. And the first thing we would like for you to do is to review the items on your no list and update as needed. Then look back over that list and determine which item seems most important for you to remember. Then we want you to review the items on your need to know list and again update as needed. Look back over the need to know list and determine which item seems most important to address in supporting implementation of phase one in your district. Then record both of those items in the space provided under success criterion four on your participant handout. Pause the video and restart after completing this portion of the final reflection. Lastly, we want you to reassess your overall level of understanding after engaging in the module on the scale of one to five. So determine your rating now in the space provided under success criterion four. So pause the video and restart after completing the second portion of the final reflection.
To help you determine possible next steps, we recommend that you complete the first section of the CDP self-assessment tool focused on essential element one, a system-wide plan for curriculum development. The element is broken down into specific criteria necessary for supporting the element with a place for you to give a rating on a scale of one being not present in our district to three being fully present and systematic in our district. Again, this may help you pinpoint specific aspects of phase one that you may want to prioritize as a part of your action plan. With your district teams, we want you to begin thinking about possible next steps, completion dates, supporting resources, responsibilities, and support you'll need for implementing phase one back in your district. The planning template is located under success criterion four on your participant handout. Finally, we ask, ask that you take time to complete the short PL survey to provide feedback on module one. An ELA certificate is available and can be accessed at the end of the survey. Please feel free to reach out to me or Fox with any questions you may have. Thank you for participating in module one of the curriculum development process professional learning series.